Hello everyone, welcome back once again on this channel. In previous video we were see, some basic understanding of artificial intelligence, like what is artificial intelligence, types of artificial intelligence etc. If you didn't watch previous video, please watch it. You can find link from my button or you can find link in description below. In today's video we will discuss some other most important interview question and answer for artificial intelligence and machine learning engineer. So if you're ready, let's start today's video. What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? Answer. Supervised learning and unsupervised learning are two fundamental paradigms in machine learning that involve different approaches to training models and extracting patterns from data. Here's a breakdown of the key differences between the two. Supervised learning. In supervised learning, the model is trained on a labeled dataset, where each data point has both input features and corresponding target labels. The goal is to learn a mapping from input features to output labels. During training, the model learns to predict the correct labels by minimizing the difference between its predictions and the true labels. Classification, assigning discrete labels, and regression, predicting continuous values, are common examples of supervised learning tasks. The model's performance is evaluated using metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and mean squared error, depending on the task. Unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, the model is trained on an unlabeled dataset, where there are no target labels provided. The goal is to find inherent patterns, structures, or groupings in the data without explicit guidance. During training, the model attempts to discover similarities, differences, or relationships among data points based on the underlying distribution of the data. Clustering or grouping similar data points and dimensionality reduction or reducing the number of features while preserving information are common unsupervised learning tasks. Evaluation in unsupervised learning is more challenging than in supervised learning, as there are no target labels to directly compare predictions against. Evaluation often involves visual inspection, coherence metrics for clustering, and explained variance for dimensionality reduction. Here is the some key differences between the two. 1. Label Availability Supervised learning uses labeled data, while unsupervised learning uses unlabeled data. 2. Task Supervised learning focuses on making predictions or classifications, while unsupervised learning aims to discover patterns or relationships within the data. 3. Guidance Supervised learning models are guided by the provided labels, while unsupervised learning models operate without explicit guidance. 4. Evaluation Supervised learning models are evaluated based on their ability to predict or classify correctly. Unsupervised learning evaluation is often more subjective and focuses on the quality of patterns or structures discovered. 5. Use Cases Supervised learning is commonly used for tasks where the desired output is known, such as image recognition or predicting stock prices. Unsupervised learning is used for exploratory data analysis, customer segmentation, and anomaly detection. In summary, the main distinction between supervised and unsupervised learning lies in the presence or absence of labeled data and the corresponding objectives of each approach. Supervised learning is about making predictions based on labeled examples, while unsupervised learning is about uncovering underlying patterns in unlabeled data. Next question. What is deep learning and its applications? Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that focuses on using artificial neural networks to model and solve complex problems. Neural networks are composed of interconnected nodes, neurons, organized into layers. Deep learning involves architectures with multiple layers, allowing the network to automatically learn hierarchical representations of data. 
These architectures are referred to as deep due to the depth of the layer structure. The power of deep learning lies in its ability to automatically learn intricate patterns and features from raw data, without the need for manual feature engineering. Deep learning algorithms can adapt and improve their performance through exposure to more data and iterative training processes. Applications of Deep Learning Deep learning has revolutionized various fields by achieving state-of-the-art performance on a wide range of tasks. Some of its notable applications include 1. Image and Video Recognition Object Detection identifying and localizing objects within images or videos. Image classification, assigning labels to images based on their content. Facial recognition, identifying and verifying individuals from images or videos. 2. Natural language processing, NLP. Sentiment analysis, determining the sentiment, positive, negative, neutral, in text. Language translation, translating text from one language to another. Text generation, generating coherent and contextually relevant text. 3. Speech recognition and synthesis. Speech-to-text conversion, converting spoken language into written text. Text-to-speech synthesis, generating human-like speech from text input. 4. Autonomous systems. Self-driving cars, using deep learning for perception and decision-making in autonomous vehicles. Robotics, enabling robots to perceive and interact with their environments. 5. Healthcare. Medical image analysis, detecting diseases and anomalies in medical images like X-rays and MRIs. Drug discovery, predicting potential drug candidates and their interactions. 6. Gaming and Entertainment Game AI, creating intelligent non-player characters, NPCs, in video games. Content Generation, creating art, music, and other media using AI algorithms. 7. Financial Services Fraud Detection, identifying fraudulent transactions based on patterns in financial data. Stock Market Prediction forecasting stock prices and trends. 8. Recommendation Systems Personalized recommendations, suggesting products, movies, or content based on user preferences. 9. Industrial Applications Predictive Maintenance, predicting equipment failures and optimizing maintenance schedules. Quality Control, inspecting products for defects in manufacturing processes. These are just a few examples of the vast array of applications that benefit from deep learning techniques. The ability of deep learning models to handle complex, high-dimensional data and automatically learn relevant features has led to significant advancements in various domains. Next question. What is the bias variance trade-off? Answer. The bias variance trade-off is a fundamental concept in machine learning that relates to the performance of a model and its ability to generalize well to unseen data. It addresses the balance between two sources of error that affect a model's predictive accuracy, bias and variance. 1. Bias. Bias refers to the error introduced by approximating a real-world problem, which may be complex, by a simplified model. A model with high bias makes strong assumptions about the data, leading it to underfit the training data and perform poorly on both the training and test datasets. In other words, a high bias model oversimplifies the problem and fails to capture the underlying relationships in the data. 2. Variance Variance, on the other hand, measures the sensitivity of a model to small fluctuations or changes in the training data. A model with high variance captures the noise and random fluctuations in the training data, resulting in overly complex models that perform well on the training data but poorly on unseen data, overfitting. High variance models tend to memorize the training data rather than generalize from it. The trade-off between bias and variance can be visualized as follows. Low bias, high variance. 
Complex models that can fit the training data very well tend to have low bias but high variance. They are prone to overfitting, as they capture noise in the training data and fail to generalize to new, unseen data points. High bias, low variance. Simple models with strong assumptions may have high bias but low variance. They oversimplify the problem and cannot capture the underlying relationships in the data, leading to poor performance on both training and test datasets. Balanced trade-off. The goal in building a good machine learning model is to strike a balance between bias and variance. The model should be complex enough to capture the important patterns in the data, low bias, while avoiding overfitting or high variance. This balance ensures that the model generalizes well to new data. Strategies to find the right balance. 1. Model complexity. Adjust the complexity of the model architecture, such as the number of features, hidden units, or layers in a neural network. 2. Regularization. Apply regularization techniques, example L1 L2 regularization, dropout, to penalize overly complex models and reduce variance. 3. Cross validation. Use cross validation to evaluate how well the model generalizes to new data and choose the best fitting model. 4. Ensemble methods. Combine multiple models, ensemble methods, to reduce variance and improve predictive performance. 5. Feature engineering. Select relevant features and pre-process data to improve the model's ability to capture underlying relationships. In summary, the bias-variance trade-off highlights the delicate balance between building models that are both complex enough to capture patterns and simple enough to avoid overfitting. Finding the right trade-off is crucial for creating models that perform well on unseen data and generalize effectively. What is Decision Tree Algorithm? Explain the working process of a decision tree algorithm. A decision tree is a versatile and widely used machine learning algorithm that's particularly useful for both classification and regression tasks. It works by recursively splitting the data into subsets based on the values of input features. Each internal node of the tree represents a decision based on a feature, and each leaf node represents a predicted outcome or class. Here's how the decision tree algorithm works. Step 1. Selecting the best feature. The algorithm starts by selecting the best feature from the dataset to split the data into subsets. The best feature is chosen based on certain criteria, often using metrics like Gini impurity, entropy, or mean squared error, depending on whether the task is classification or regression. Step 2. Splitting the data. The chosen feature is used to split the data into subsets based on different possible values of that feature. Each subset will be used to create child nodes in the tree. Step 3. Repeating the process. The above steps are then repeated for each subset created by the split. The algorithm selects the best feature for each subset and splits it further. This process is recursively repeated until a stopping criterion is met. The stopping criterion could be a maximum depth for the tree, a minimum number of samples in a leaf node, or a purity threshold for the classes in a leaf node. Step 4. Creating leaf nodes. Once the recursive splitting process is complete, the tree will have multiple internal nodes representing decisions and leaf nodes representing outcomes or classes. In the case of classification, the leaf node might represent the majority class in that subset. In regression, the leaf node might represent the mean or median value of the target variable. Step 5. Predictions. To make predictions for new data points, the algorithm starts from the root node and follows the path of decisions down the tree until it reaches a leaf node. The value or class associated with that leaf node is then used as the prediction for the new data point. Key Characteristics of Decision Trees 1. Interpretability, 
Decision trees are easy to interpret as their structure is similar to human decision-making logic. 2. Feature importance. The algorithm can provide insights into the importance of different features in making decisions. 3. Nonlinearity. Decision trees can capture complex nonlinear relationships in the data. 4. Overfitting. Without proper regularization or pruning, decision trees can overfit the training data, leading to poor generalization to new data. 5. Ensemble methods. Decision trees can be combined into ensemble methods like random forest and gradient boosting to improve predictive performance. While decision trees are simple and powerful, they can suffer from overfitting if not properly controlled. Regularization techniques like pruning, using a minimum number of samples per leaf, or limiting the tree's depth are common ways to prevent overfitting and create well-generalizing models. That's all for this video, you are welcome in case you have any feedback or suggestion. We will see some more important question and answer in upcoming videos, so if you're new on this channel please subscribe, like and turn on notification for videos. Thanks for watching.